G'day possums, welcome back to the lab. I have a Rode Wireless Go 2 mic here today and it does not power up from its internal battery. It's either a dead battery or charge controller. So today I'm going to fix this faulty microphone. Enough talk, let's get started. We have our standard Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone set here and that comes in a set of three and you have two microphones or two transmitters and then one receiver and we can see our receiver is powered up and working fine. You can see this transmitter here is fine, we'll just tap it and you'll see that just go up and down but this unit does not power up whatsoever. And this is the thing, you lose one of these, you have to replace the whole lot. And in America, these are worth, you know, around that $300 mark. In Australia, New Zealand, they're worth about $400. So it's a lot of money. So hopefully we can get away with fixing this unit today for about $10 or $20 um, and get it all fixed up and bring the whole set back to life. So we'll move on with uh, replacing the battery right now. As usual, my favorite toy, the Bosch heat gun. I'm just heating the top of the Rode Wireless Go 2 here. I'll set my temperature for about 90 degrees Celsius. So I'll get this nice and toasty warm and break any adhesive or sealant. Um, and then we'll crack it open. We'll give it a little bit longer. Okay, I think it's hot enough. So what we'll do is we'll try and exploit a crack in here and we'll do that under the microscope. I've got my eye sesame tool here, if you can see that under the microscope. And I'm just going to exploit the right side here. I'm just going to get, try and get the thin edge in. Dig in a little bit and just try and get underneath this plastic. Just a matter of getting that tool underneath. We might chip away a little bit of paint. And now we just get our little plastic spudger, put it under the pride edge and just run our little tool around. All the way around. I stop at the nine o'clock position and separate the RF antenna from the top case. Then continue carefully opening and you can see the RF antenna is intact. We have our little battery connector here and you know on first look you probably think oh yeah I might give it a good old pull and try and rip it out. But this is another trap for young players. This is what we call a pop-up connector and all you have to do is put the old spudger underneath, give it a quick twist and it should just pop up and come straight out. I'm just going to reheat the top again, get it nice and toasty so I can separate the battery underneath because it's held on with that adhesive. So that's nearly done. We'll flip it over and we'll remove the battery. Get my spudger underneath just gently pry up. Done. Right, we have our old battery here. It's 3.8 volts at 350 milliamp hour. Rechargeable lithium polymer battery. And you can see at the top it says Rode here. Rode didn't make these batteries. They're put out to a, some sort of factory in China to make these batteries to a, a specification. And um, this is going to be its replacement. It's an eco cell. I got this off eBay for about $10. 3.7 volts, so it's not 3.8, but uh, look, it's close enough. And this 3.8 is just all marketing guff. 
so 3.7, um, slightly lower capacity, 250 milliamp hours. But you know, if you've got a dead microphone and you're just about to spend three or four hundred dollars to replace the whole lot, I think you can live with your um, charging capacity capacity being down by about you know that 20 or 30 percent. So not a not a huge loss in charging capacity. It's around the same size. Uh, both these batteries have three leads, so plus and minus, plus the third lead being NTC or negative temperature coefficient monitoring. And that's just to make sure that as the battery is being charged, um, it doesn't heat up too much. And if it heats up too much, that charging is slowed down to protect the battery itself. Um, we checked this previously earlier today and it came up at zero volts. So this battery is completely cactus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to chop the lead off here and I'm going to attach it onto here uh, and we'll solder that all up very neatly and we'll plug it in and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I disconnect the original plug from the old battery using offset cutting to avoid shorts. I prepare the new battery using offset cuts to avoid shorts again. I solder the negative to the original plug. Then the positive. And last, the NTC or temperature wire. We'll quickly check our battery voltage to make sure it's all serviceable. I'll turn on the multimeter. Just put negative down there. Let's bring in our positive probe and try not to short things out. And we can see we've got just over four volts or 4.2 volts. So this battery is serviceable. Plug the new battery in. Put the battery in the cavity. Then I test the charging and the mic. I heat the top. Then remove the old double-sided tape. I black out scratches and chips. In the next step, we're going to be using the B7000 adhesive, and they use this to seal up uh, smartphones such as Samsung's and the iPhones. We're just spreading this around the outside. Put our top back on. Wipe off any excess adhesive and clamp up with some micro clamps. And we'll just let that sit for about a day to dry off. Well, that's it. Both my Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones now work. I have a fully functioning set and it only cost me roughly $10 to fix and it's one less easily fixed device to landfill. If you're interested in seeing other stuff repaired, check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.